Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good day. Gord, you're hurting hippie. Welcome to my Tuesday. And probably yours too. Might be later. Anyways, pitter-patter, let's get at her today. Plus 14, going to 24. Nice, sunny, first day of September. Welcome September. I'm not sure it's with a lot of fanfare. Today... My linear thought is a little difficult because school has started for the majority, but not all kids, including Pasha, who is homeschooling. You have already read the title. Yes, I'm talking about the disinformation age. And this is a really good example, a good kickoff of this talk is the difficulties my ex and I had, and many of you have had, in trying to determine, even if we have the choice, but if we do, of do we send our child to school or do we not? It was a difficult travel through information highways that led nowhere. It's so easy to to see one piece of data and a whole bunch of data to back it up and yet search the opposite and find the same thing. Enough data to make you think that's true. What's really got me up in arms and it started me on this because I've, I've been talking about the information for a long time is yesterday. Let me back it up. For homeschooling, we had to decide by August 24 at 4 p.m. We had to enroll in online learning or your child was expected to show up at school today. And they said about 20% of the students in Calgary, about 20,000 students, like Pasha, are homeschooling. Because the parents, it looks like about 80%, 80 grand worth of kids going to school all day. But the decision factors we use to make our decision, we were leaning on sending him to school. Because we felt that maybe, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 percent of the kids would stay at home, therefore attendance would be down, therefore the classrooms would be larger. And we were told, we were told before we made that decision that in class learning meant our kids, once they got inside, would have their mask on and would keep their mask on, except, you know, in places, private places like the bathroom, in the stall, uh, in very private, uh, if kids needed a break, there were places where they could sit at a computer but far away from everybody and take off their mask, that kind of thing. What has upset a lot of people, and I'll give you a for instance, my daughter decided to send her kids because of the safety guidelines because of the social distancing that was promised to be practiced even though difficult. And then yesterday, August 31, long after the cutoff to enroll, they said, oh, by the way, uh, we do not find that it's going to be possible in class with the amount of students to social distance properly. They will not need to wear their mask. Uh, yeah, I think they're saying in class, they won't need to wear their mask because they'll be sitting beside each other, but they're not going to be able to be a couple of meters apart. This has changed the landscape that everyone used to make decisions. There's a lot of parents now upset and saying, had I had that information a week ago, my child would not have to go today. I'm waiting to hear the backlash of all of that. So that leads me into my discussion. How do we navigate this world and try 
to make good decisions. Well, these kind of things don't help. When when our powers that be, whether they be health ministers who change the rules last minute that don't comply with the rules already given to the parents, whether it be schools who can't comply, where do we get good information? This isn't about you and your child in school. This is about information, period. I want to give a good example because on my little known facts, I go through a little mini exercise of navigating disinformation because I don't want to give you a little known fact that is actually able to be fact-checked and called wrong. But let's first be careful about fact checkers. I've been fact checked by Facebook on, well, on Instagram, but by the Facebook fact checkers and had quite a few of my posts deleted that made perfect sense to me. To keep my account, I allowed them to be deleted instead of called false. But it's come out just in the last couple of days that the Gates Foundation pays for or at least pays for most, of Facebook's fact-checkers. If they're paid by a certain... Let's just say their fact-checking is being called into question many, many, many times, and this might tell you why. It's a tough world, because we're given what we expect to see. We're not given base information like a scientist and try and figure out what's best for me and my family and my situation. No, we're given what the computer, what the algorithms think you want to get as well as it's peppered, salt and peppered, spiced up a bit to include what they want you to think. So, how do I navigate it? Really poorly, but I do. I tend to, on a very high level, let's first say this. If I want to find something, I will first ask the question of Google. Then, I'll look at the first three or four, and I may go three or four pages beyond to see if there's disseminating stuff from that search. That's only the beginning. Then I take the opposite of that question that I ask Google, and I ask the opposite. And usually, very likely, you know, you say, is the sky blue? And you type it in, and, and you'll get information about the sky being blue. Then you type, the sky is not blue, and see what you get and you'll get different information. Usually, you'll get what supports you. You want to know that the sky is not blue, you'll get information that the sky is not blue. That doesn't mean it isn't blue. It doesn't mean it is. It means there's information on both sides. Then, then try to be more generic in, in your third or tertiary search and say, what color is the sky? And let it, the it, the search engine, try to bring up information. And there, you may get both sides. From that, what do you do? From that, you have to actually dig in and see. I'm going to give you an example. My little known facts, I'm going to talk about it later, but it was about the sneeze traveling 100 miles per hour. So first, I put... First, I put this search. A single sneeze travels 100 miles per hour. And then I put this search. A sneeze does not travel 100 miles per hour. But what I got was, yes, it does. And then I typed, yeah, how fast is a sneeze? And I got the same. When you, when with all three types of searches, you get the same information. You can learn that maybe you can trust it, but you also got to go with your gut. 
And I'm not saying to do this with absolutely everything, but I sure have taught it to Pasha because Pasha quite often, or he'd always say, Dad, could you search this for me or search that for me? And I said, you've got Google. And he says, yeah, but you're better at searching. There is an art to it. There is a, you have to think that you're trying to fool the machine into giving you better information, not the information that you want. You know, it's like my news feed. Google Pixel, every Google Pixel has a page that you just go like that and you have your news feed. That news feed is supposed to, over time, tailor itself to be delivering the news that you want. And there's even a little click here that you can say, I want more of this, I want less of this. And I've been trying this for over a month. And I keep saying, I want less of this crap, and I want more of this stuff. And you know what? I still don't get the news that I want. And I still get the news that seems they want to give me. Okay, I'm going to give you an example here. Here's in my news feed why everyone is talking about Donald J. Trump's watery eyes. Donald Trump Jr. gave a speech at the RNC. And of course it was in favor of his father. And of course it was it was a pretty powerful speech and he very boldly spoke very strongly against the left and their hypocrisy. Whether you agree with it or not, the fact that all the mainstream news can report about him is, was he on cocaine? Why was his eyes watery? Why was his forehead and his lip sweating? Not one article except from Fox News, not one article from the left-leaning media on his claims against the left. And you would think that if everything he's saying about the left is crap, their articles would be, he says this, but ha-ha, fact check, wrong. He says this, fact check, wrong. No, they talk about the look in his eyes and theoretical discussion of what that could be. That, my friends, is not news. That, my friends, is worse than The View and their gossip girls sitting around just putting people down. That's what it is, is gossip. But I digress. I'm trying to stay middle of the road here, but we've got a difficulty in the world today, and that is information. And we need to bring more to the masses and give them the ability to think on their own. That's what it should be. So, friends, it's not an easy discussion. It's not an easy thing to set up and tell you how I navigate. And don't take totally my word for it. I'm a lost, confused 60-year-old man trying to find my way through this fog. And I have my own issues. Maybe it's good to hear from me because I'm somebody who questions even the thoughts I own, I have, never mind what my devices are trying to tell me. And remember, the device is telling you nothing. The device is managed by a whole bunch of people who want you to think a certain way. Maybe we need to let it go. I want to say one last thing. Shout out to Jackie, Jackie Violetina, J. Thank you. You said yesterday, a lot of people were, oh, some great comments from all of you, but Jay, you said, I tend to just ignore all the news and I'm living my life the best I can. And I like that attitude. I really wish I could shut it all off. 
But, friends, we're about to see some of this stuff come to fruition with kids going back to school. We will see what we do not know, and down the road we will know more. Time, patience, and an honest desire to see and know more. We all have it. It's just not being satisfied lately. Time to stand up and say, that's bullshit. That's not the kind of article I want. So friends, I think we've kind of just, we've talked about it. We're in a disinformation age. And here I am trying to give information from a middle point, from a centrist point, but depending on the information I'm delivering, I lean right, I lean left. It depends on the information. I am not somebody who sits in a camp and stays there. I will float my decisions, depending on the information given, depending on where it fits in my psyche and how important it is to me. And you will do the same. The only thing I ask is dig further and suspect everything. It used to be when I was growing up, my dad would say, only believe half of what you hear and almost all of what you see. But we're now in a world where they can fake what you see. So only believe half of what you hear or see. Investigate the rest. If it's important to you, make sure that the information you have is as accurate as you can find and not just what was thrown at you. And one final thing, always go past the headline. The headline is so full of disinformation because at least half of the people only read the headline and move on. Usually, the real facts, the kind of dispose the headline are around paragraph 14 or 15. You know what I mean? It's not stated at the beginning that, hey, this is, this is crap. But later on in the story, you will usually see something that kind of goes against what that says. One day, one day, we need a revolution of journalism. And let's get back to just the facts, man. Just the facts. And time for... Yeah, my own factoid situation, a more fun situation. I've got a new list. Gary, I tried your Ripley's, believe it or not, but I can't copy, paste, use any of that information unless I pay a license. So I'm going, I'm just finding facts and I'm printing them out and I'm bringing them to all of you. So as we said early in the section, my first one is a sneeze travels one hind. The first one is a sneeze travels 100 miles per hour and shoots 100,000 germs into the air. You know, that is kind of amazing and kind of gross, but it's true because I did research it. Oh, excuse me, and this next one. Eww. You're born with just one pint of blood. And by the time you're an adult, you have four to five quarts. That's eight to ten pints. That's an amazing difference of how much blood is in the system. But you think of it, you grow eight to ten times the size of your infant self. I did research that one too, and most of what I found backed it up except two out of the four sites I looked at said you're born with half a pint of blood. I guess it depends how small you are. My little granddaughter, look here, yeah, she was five pounds, 11 ounces. I bet you she's slightly less than a pint. And the final one, yeah, the human body contains enough fat to make seven bars of soap. I'm pretty sure they're talking about the average body. Because 
Of course, a really big person is going to make more soap than a little skinny old man like me. So, friends, I want to thank you for hearing me through. I've been doing a little bit of political talk, but trying to stay in the center. And so far, I haven't had anybody comment rudely, meanly, or in a fighting manner. Some have disagreed, and I've enjoyed the disagreements. That's what life's about. I love discussion. I wish you well. I wish you peace, and I wish you health. And if any of those are missing, I wish you the correct medication for you to help you feel better. Peace and cheers. Love and harmony.